In this video, we're going to turn Home Assistant into a monitored security system using nothing but presence detection, some sensors we already have, and a lot of scripts. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone? Welcome to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff, and here at Slacker Labs, we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. If you're into Home Assistant, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. It costs less money than a useful if this then that subscription. This week, we're talking about how to turn Home Assistant into a monitored security system. Because personally, I don't see the point in paying someone in a call center to monitor the sensors inside my house. I know that that might be a controversial statement and it's not meant to knock anyone who sees value in paying for monitored security. There's definitely times in which it is valuable. But if you don't want another monthly subscription or you just wanna keep strangers from being able to see what's going on inside your home, Home Assistant provides a nice platform for building a security system, and you can get all of the benefits of a monitored system, except that you're the one doing the monitoring. If you have a system like Simply Safe or Bode, you can directly integrate those with Home Assistant and have access to those sensors. If you don't have a system that has a direct integration with Home Assistant, you could always look at replacing the main board inside of your security panel with a connected.io board and get the same level of integration. There are a lot of videos on setting up Home Assistant as a security system, and they cover things like setting up an alarm panel in your Lovelace UI or even setting up biometric scanners. But I wanted to take a smart home approach. So I designed my security system with three goals in mind. The first goal was if we're home, then the security system needed to notify everyone in the house of the security issue so that we could respond and get out of the house if needed. The second goal was if we weren't home, the security system needed to just let us know that there was a security issue so that we could respond if we needed to and then just collect as much data and evidence as possible and archive it. And the third goal was to do all of this while eliminating as much direct interaction as possible because I'm building a smart home after all. Since I have this system built already, this will be a walkthrough of my configuration. So let's get to it. The idea was to design this system with as little direct interaction as possible. In other words, Build a security system with the intelligence of a smart home, which to me means no alarm panel that requires you to enter a code to arm or disarm the system. This system is entirely based on presence and context-based automations. I started with a single switch to control the arming and disarming. I call it sentry mode. And if it's on, the security system is armed. Turning it on triggers an automation that uses the choose action and based on whether a door is open, arms the system or notifies us that there was an issue preventing the arming. Arming the system happens in one of three ways. The first is when the family has left. If you saw my video on how my presence detection system works, you would have already seen this, but arming the security is part of the family has left automation. The second way is by voice command or clicking an icon in the UI. However, you cannot simply ask the voice assistant to turn on sentry mode like you would a light. That input boolean is not exposed to the voice assistant. So you either have to be logged into Home Assistant or use the phrase activate barn door protocol. This means that unless a guest knows the phrase, which of course now all of you do, they cannot arm the system by voice and no login to Home Assistant means no ability to click the button. The third method is time-based. If 11 p.m. rolls around and the security system has not armed, then an automation checks to see if everyone is home, guest mode is off, and sentry mode is off, and then arms the system because chances are we're in for the night. Now, once the system is armed, it simply watches the doors. The only exception to this is dog mode, which if you have a dog that tends to need to go out in the middle of the night is awesome. The idea with this is if sentry mode is on and home assistant senses motion close to the back door, it assumes the back door might open and turns on dog mode. With dog mode on, the security system ignores the back door opening for a period of 20 minutes. During this time, if any other door opens, the alarm goes off. This means no one has to remember to disarm the security in the middle of the night and then rearm it when the dog is done. If a door is opened while the sentry mode is on, that kicks off the security response. Immediately, Home Assistant announces to every room in the house there's been a breach and says exactly where the breach is. This is enough to wake people up. Then, for 90 seconds, it lets whoever's in the house know that the security alarm is about to go off. If the system isn't disarmed in that time, the security alarm plays. My audio system is connected to an old home theater receiver and it gets loud. In fact, I think the neighbors can hear the alarm with all the doors and windows closed and we're not that close. Which brings us to how to disarm the system. Just like arming, disarming starts with turning the sentry mode off. 
This kicks off an automation that requires some conditions to be met before it's complete. If at least one family member is home or guest mode is on, then the system will disarm. However, if those conditions are not met, then the security system will just rearm itself. The idea behind this is someone could not disarm the system if we're not here. Kicking off the disarm process happens just like arming in one of three ways. First, when someone arrives home, the standby script is kicked off, which disarms the system. Second, we can disarm by voice command using a custom routine in the echo that triggers the standby script. This voice command is not something people would know or be able to easily guess. This is the closest the system has to an access code. But unlike a normal access code, even if you knew the command, it still requires one of us to be here to work. And lastly, at 5.30 a.m. each morning, as long as we're home and guest mode is off, the security will disarm if it hasn't already been disarmed, since it's when one of us is usually up. That is most of the major parts to my security system. The only piece not covered is I have cameras watching the access points, and when we are not here, they record motion. Now, no doubt, someone is thinking about the potential exploitability of the IoT pieces and Home Assistant in this setup. And while that is a concern, my position is it's far easier and requires less work and time to simply kick in the door or break a window than taking the time to hack a smart lock. This wasn't designed to be foolproof. It was designed to ensure we know when there was an issue and to collect evidence of what happened. And I think it does that. If you want to know more details about this setup, I have a two-part series over at slackerlabs.com where I go through this setup in detail. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. Also, I'll leave a link to my security.yaml configuration file, which lives in my packages folder, so you can take a closer look at what I have in there. We didn't cover some of the things like the monitoring I do around the garage or notifications around doors opening. So if you want to know more about that, you can find those automations and scripts in that file. And that's the story of how I used Home Assistant to build a security system. So press that like button if you found this useful. Subscribe for more home automation content if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.